Fellas, guys are always asking me, how do you rig these for slip floats, slip bobbers, slip corks? I know a lot of you guys are rod and reel fishing, so I make this rod and reel oriented. I recommend for this type of fishing, bait feeder spinning reel. I know some people like the bait casters and all that, but uh, I give me a bait feeder. What a bait feeder does is allow you to use this just like a fly rod. Click that open. See how much easier that is? Close that. Get the main drag hook. You see that? So you have two separate drag systems, one on the bottom and one on the top. That's how I would recommend you. That's why I recommend you use this. If you're fishing for bluegill, I'd recommend four to six pound line. If you're fishing for catfish, I would recommend 12 to 17 pound line. Okay, so the rod I recommend, I personally recommend you build your own rod for this. There's a rope finish here. Again, for catfish, I'd start with about a nine weight. If you're going for bluegill, I'd get about a seven weight. Uh, and I, you're actually taking a fly rod blank and actually building it to use a, a, a slip float here. A lot of people might want to use carp rods. That's good. You might want to use salmon steelhead rods, whatever you want. Right? If you want to make it more like a fly rod here, you can take this and move it way back here so that, the, so that the reel is back here and you have just a little small handle like that. Pull that up, light drag. Pull it down heavy drag. Set it for light drag without having to open the bail. That means you can, again, you can fish it just like you would a fly rod. The bait runner reels. Okuma probably makes the best bait runner for the money. Uh, these are some cheap China bait casters I got, bait runners I got. I like them pretty well. Uh, this is 20 pound test Dacron. You can use 30 pound test Dacron. This is basically waxed kite string. That's what it is. Tie up an overhand knot, except it's going to be a five overhand knot for Five. What I like to do is do another one just right on top of it, make it three. So, three. If you want to learn how to tie these stopper knots like this, just get on animatednots.com. See, that's your stopper knot. It allows you to move and set your depth. It'll reel up through the eyes of the rod. Second thing you're going to need is a bead, eight millimeter bead. My floats come with all this, so you don't have to worry about rounding it up yourself. That's what stops it right there. So if you want to fish 30 foot deep, you can set that 30 feet and the slope will slip and stop right there at 30 feet if you want. And as far as the Gen 3 floats go, you can either do it one or two ways. Take one of your floats, you can either put it on here directly, right? It just fits straight onto the bottom of the float. It'll be, that's where it stops. It'll be, it'll stop right there. Right. The next way to do it is you'll notice a lot of people ask, I send this big old freaking snap with it. And people are like, what are you, put your hook on that? No, you just, you're going to run this onto the line instead of running the bobber right onto the line. This way you can fish straight off the bottom if you want, you can take it off if you want. It serves the same purpose, it's just a snap swivel. The snap swivel goes onto the line like that, okay? Now, you can just um, take your float, snap that bad boy onto the line right there. Now you have it on there. And the weight of this snap, that's triple threat swivel, that snap and the weight of the uh, pole swivel that's on the float itself is enough weight to make that thing tip up in the water like that. And so all you gotta do is put a very bare minimum amount of weight down here. Okay, so let's pretend that this fly is your favorite treble hook with punch bait or your favorite number eight hook with your with your favorite brim bait or fly or whatever. Split shot here, split shot weight, small split shot is good. But I have tons of old uh, lead core line to have for my hand lining and I just use it, I just recycle it. Okay, so you should end up with something like this. You know, I hate split shots because they abrade the line and crush the line. You can just tie a little overhand knot on the line and then just twist it around with lead core because if you're doing a lot of hand lining you'll have a lot of lead core line left over that you can use for this purpose. I use this for bluegill fishing too. <sighs> That's why I hate rod and reel man. You have your punch and bait or your favorite bluegill fly or, or night crawlers whatever. You have your weight either split shot here, triple threat swivel with a snap or you can just have the float directly. Right? That goes to a bead and that goes to a stopper knot. That's how you attach it to the line. Let's say you need to fish 10 feet deep. So we know that that's about six feet, say four feet like that, okay? Let's just say I cast it out, plop, 
this plop hits right here and this and, and, and it, the weights or this thing just tilts this thing straight up in the air just like that this from the middle of this up will be sticking out of the water so it's highly visible from a long distance and this here will be below the water and the line is running below the water so you don't have all that wind working against you just like it is today so now bam it's just floating 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 float and then bam there it is 12 foot deep right there that means this is set 12 foot deep let's say you want to go 30 foot deep you just keep moving this up the line you know and this will just keep on sinking until it bam hits that stopper knot and it'll it'll lay down and bam once it hits that stopper knot it'll just sit up just like that if it's kind of grazing the bottom it'll just be like that if it's dead on the bottom it'll be sitting like that if it's sitting straight up and all of a sudden it starts taking like that a lot of people say does it take the bobber all the way under no they don't have to this thing is designed to indicate what's going on so let me show you if if that line is down below the water and that thing tilts like that what happened that means that fish took that and went this way and it tilts it because each action has an equal and opposite reaction if he taken, you see the float moving like that, which means that catfish is just swimming around it like that, tasting it. You can see, you can know when to set the hook. This thing is designed to let you know what's going on, to make it very, very sensitive. It's not designed to, oh, I just want to see it take it under the water. That's not, this is a finesse fishing approach. It's really, it's really like fly fish. If, if it's just sitting here like this and the fish hits it from up the bottom, boom, it's going to come up. You know to set the hook. It is any motion is designed to tell you exactly what's going on. Sorry for the wind, man. Uh, but let's reel back up. So you need the fish shallow. You just shallow up. You just start shallowing up. You just shallow up. People say, oh, you can't fish shallow. Well, yes, you can. It's about three feet deep right there. Ah! You see why I hate rod and reel? Classic. Boom. You know it's only about three foot. You know it's only about five foot deep. They're hitting it three foot off the bottom and so bam boom that thing will sit up just like that three foot deep and you know that there's nine inches from here to the bottom of the float and there's another almost three inches from the bottom of the float to the line so you know you got about a foot below the water now let's see what you do now how do you stow it you can just put that slip float right there in the like that or slip it right down through there just like that if you want right there and it'll, it'll just stay right there if you want right that's how you can stow it with the gen 3's just take this off take that off sorry take that off you can just put it in your car and that way it's all left is there it's, it, it, it packs down nicely so ah So who makes slip floats like this? You know, you know, Mr. Jones, CJ's Catfish Bait was an early inspiration. He makes some good floats, man. Check his floats out, CJ's Catfish Bait. Just type that in Google or right here on YouTube, you'll find, you'll find them. Make some good floats, man. Them suckers work. You know, uh, if, you, if you go to Chad Ferguson's website uh, and get his secret catfish rig, you know, I won't give it away, but uh, I got mine here. There's you, you can go to carp fishermen, look at the kind of floats that carp fishermen use. Generally, it's a waggler. You can go to the British types of floats. You can tie, you can get some. There's some dudes over there in Britain make some works of art, man. And that those are some good slip floats to have. Or you can just go to the Wally World and get whatever kind of slip float, like the Camels or whatever. I think it's called Camel Tackle or whatever. Yeah, they, that, that's a good place to get some slip floats. Or you can buy them from me, uh, you know, just shameless plug, be honest with you. They're on my website, they're on eBay, and they're on Amazon. And so you can buy them like that. And let's say you're somebody who um, you want to make your own floats, you know, like this stem swivel here. It's a swivel that has a, just a stem on it as opposed to a double swivel that helps make them yourself if you want to make them yourself. I mean, any slip float like this works with a hand line. Uh, which is my favorite way to fish if you haven't see again i can just put that sucker down there and it just kind of unwrap there, there it goes see i'd already i'd already be cussing mad if i were using that rod to do this right but same thing bead right here see i have a different you have a bead down here and another swivel and then i have that same sort of um thing here and i use this one for bluegill fishing with the float here same sort of thing right there just like that you, i can cast it out boom plop hits the water 
boom, it'll just stand right up just like that. Just like that. And so, uh, so it works. I mean, the float doesn't care what it's catching or what rig it's tied to. The only thing it's designed to do is to tell you what's going on under the water. Folks, that is how you rig a slip cork, slip float, slip bobber, catfish bobber, cheese bait bobber, whatever you guys want to call them. You can use it for brim, you can use it for bluegill, you can use it for crappie, you can use it for catfish, whatever. Anything that you can catch on a float, you can use those slip bobbers and slip floats for. So uh, get out there, be careful, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later, all right? Um, I guess, yeah.